Well, Intel's gaming GPU line has almost entirely had worrisome info trickling out about its ability to perform in the past two years. Intel's enterprise GP GPU products like Ponte Vecchio never seem to have the same degree of skepticism. Now, to be fair, there has always been less info in general about these products, at least coming from me, but I don't know, maybe that's just because I tend to cover non-gaming products as closely. But the reason I bring that up right from the get-go is I feel like it's worth mentioning that while these massive multi-tile GP GPU chips look like they should be having the same problems as the gaming DG1 and DG2 chips, that's never been what I've heard. I've only ever heard that they're way more expensive and coming along just fine. In fact, in comparison to the gaming lineup, I have a minor update for ZDG2 right now. Supposedly, it is all but officially delayed back to at least quarter three, 2021. Now, if you'd have watched my last Intel video, and I do recommend you do to come up to speed with what's going on inside Intel, both last year and what is likely to happen this year, you would know that that shouldn't really surprise anybody. But, I mean, it is an update, you know, ZDG2 almost for sure coming out late quarter three or after that when Intel's been saying it should be coming out summer this year. I just don't think that's happening at all now. But while I have brought you yet more bad news to the gaming GPU lineup from Intel, let's get into some possibly incredibly good news from their non-gaming lineup, Ponte Vecchio. I'm going to go through that in my league today, but first a brief ad from a sponsor. Let's just admit it, nobody wants to pay full price for those Windows 10 professional keys. But shopping for deals on eBay can be a risky process that wastes your time, which is why you should simply just go to cdkoffers.com. cdkoffers.com offers an assortment of Windows software products, Steam games, Origin games, Uplay games, and even games on Xbox and PlayStation. Help out Moore's Law's debt and save yourself some money by using offer code BROKENSILICON for 25% off all Windows software and die shrink for 3% off everything on the website. Use CDK offers today. Okay, Intel Ponte Vecchio, and let me say from the get-go that like my big Navi leaks, I put in a deeper color, blue because it's Intel this time, red was AMD, things that I'm 90% or more sure of, and then things in white that are either, say, explanations or above 50%. Again, I'm not guessing on any of this stuff, guys. I wouldn't put it in a leak if I was, but I do think it's worth emphasizing things that I am very sure on versus things I'm just mostly sure on. Anyways, let us get into the leak with another disclaimer that I'm not going to recap all of Ponte Vecchio's reporting by me nor other leakers' information. Today, I just want to talk about new stuff that I've learned, and all you really need to know for this leak is that Ponte Vecchio is a GP GPU project separate from DG development, although, of course, they target things that they learn back and forth, and targeted for the Aurora supercomputer. Now, this is what I'm talking about, what Raja just tweeted, a Tile X2. Now, by that, I mean there are two tiles on that GPU, and this is the thing that they were hoping to make on only Intel nodes in the past, but they clearly just showed that they are willing to go to TSMC for, if necessary. I wouldn't take this as 100% confirmation that they will use any specific amount of TSMC or, I don't know, anything, right? Samsung Global Foundries or their own nodes, only that they are clearly planning to go outside if necessary, so there are no delays. And... Also note that I am not showing the exact numbers for the specs I'm about to go through, and this is to protect my sources. However, they are close enough that it's a negligible difference, people. So you can still discuss this as if it is the exact number, in my opinion. Now, the chip shown off by Raja is, as I mentioned, a single dual-tile Ponte Vecchio chip. You can kind of see it, how there's two sides to it, and each of these chips targets 46 teraflops of FP64. Already, some people seeing this are going, holy crap. And let me elaborate. Ponte Vecchio supposedly, and I have confirmed this with multiple sources, by most accounts, it has one-to-one -one FP64 to FP32. <laughs> Guys, if you're a gamer, what you need to know is that is oh so not the case. 
most of the time. In fact, what you need to know is that FP32 is what most people talk about, and FP64 is usually half of that at best, but it's often 1 64th that with some products. And I cannot disclose EU counts or rough clock speeds yet, but that's what you need to know. That chip, Raja showed off, supposedly is capable of 46 teraflops of FP64, and that could wipe the floor with A100. Additionally, each one of these dual tile GPUs comes with around 442 megabytes of L3 cache. Again, that's not the exact number, but I can't say the exact number without hurting sources. And the cache system is key to Ponte Vecchio's performance. To be entirely honest, what I'm hearing discussed about this sounds very similar to Infinity Cache. I have to wonder if Raja had a hand in some of that early development before it happened, but I don't know. Either way, whether Raja came up with some of those ideas while he was still at AMD before RDNA came out, or if it's just a separate solution that sounds similar coming from Intel, that's what's being said. And from what I understand, that is the cache on each one of those GPUs, not the Rambo cache, which I'm not going to get too much into, but it is worth mentioning. My understanding is that Rambo cache is additional cache that will be manufactured on an internal node to Intel and placed in between dies or between full GPUs. To be honest, the way they depict it in pictures makes it a little at odds, I feel, with how WCCF tech depicted it. But I don't know. I would just say this is not that 442 megabytes of cache, right? And I want to stress that this is my current understanding. You can already see I'm at the limits of describing it and that Ponte Vecchio does utilize many different memory tiers and a ton of memory per each tier that this could evolve from here by 2022. Finally, the current dual tile design delivers 33.2 terabytes per second of bandwidth via 128 gigabytes of HBM2E. And this is, of course, the current configuration for what they're designing that, of course, can change if they decide to give it more or less in the final product. And the roadmaps usually show a late 2021 release date. In fact, that's the internal roadmap I leaked last year, but I am hearing whispers this may actually not be ready till late, I'm sorry, till early 2022. And that's just because this will be by far the most complex and expensive chip Intel has ever produced. And unlike DG2, some of these customers can afford to wait with the performance it is bringing the constraints the requirements and the budget for this product is not the same as dg2 it has different realities in terms of coming to market competitively all right now that we've gone through that information i want to highlight that last bullet point about the resources behind ponte vecchio relative to dg1 and dg2 and the constraints it's really worth stressing that when it comes to prioritization, Ponte Vecchio is far more important to Intel than their discrete gaming lineup, right? The R&D they're putting into these GPU type products and accelerators, a lot of that is meant for integrating into chips on laptops, maybe, you know, having some kind of an MX450 competitor or single tile little GPU they can put on there as well. And then also these massively expensive products that they will sell to supercomputer companies and you know giant scale machine learning platforms there's a lot more resources behind products like ponte vecchio compared to dg and because these customers that would buy it can also pay far more money there's also less constraints right if intel cannot make dg2 a 3070 that costs less than 400 dollars to make it's not going to compete this year. It's just not going to. Meanwhile, there's practically no pricing constraints on these 16 tile total systems that Intel can sell to people with very deep pockets. You know, if they come across a problem in scaling the performance, they can say, let's just put on another type of cache called Rambo cache so the communication's better. Uh, yeah, it costs a lot, and we're going to source from up to, like, what was it, like, seven different nodes for this, but they will pay up. People will not pay up for a gaming card that could end up costing, like, $2,000 unless it can beat the 3090. And so, yeah. There's a reason Intel's putting more resources behind these chips, and there's a reason they are so elaborate. And when I say elaborate, I am not saying that 
Ponte Vecchio is for sure going to succeed. That's not my point with this final conversation about, you know, budgetary constraints in their targeted customers. But my point is that it does not have the same problems that DG would have. And therefore, you shouldn't assume that if DG2 fails, that Ponte Vecchio will also fail. They are different projects with entirely different sets of resources behind them. But again, it is insanely uh, complicated, these chips they're putting together. And they will be very expensive. They will be... It's it's an undertaking. So let's not assume it will work. But if there's one thing Intel has, still, it's a lot of brute force and manpower. And so I could actually see Ponte Vecchio succeeding and wiping the floor with NVIDIA's A100, which I'm directly told it is targeted at. Although, let's be fair, it's clearly not just targeted at A100. People seeing the FP64 numbers of A100 and then that of one of these Ponte Vecchio GPUs are probably going, NVIDIA's dead or whatever. But remember that this will, although they've been reporting it's probably going to come out late 2021, I am hearing whispers that it may slip to 2022. And well, yeah, by then, NVIDIA may have some type of Lovelace or Hopper competitor against this, but well, it would have to be over twice as good as A100 at FP64. So as long as Intel can launch by early 2022, I think they may have something really impressive for that market. But we're just going to have to wait and see and wait for other videos that cover that. So do... Remember to subscribe, like, share, and ring the bell button for this channel. We need your support. And if you are, you know, a longtime subscriber that just showed up to check out this video, check out the other videos that have come out in January and early February as well. Specifically, that 6700 XT video I just did, I think, is a really good summarization of the problems Intel, NVIDIA, and AMD are having to deal with with launching products this year and why they are maybe so much scarcity and yet so much trouble fixing it inside of those companies. I really think that's almost essential viewing for a lot of my fans in addition to that can Intel retaliate in 2021. And that's that. Support us on Patreon if you have the money. There's exclusive content dropping without ads every week. And as always, thank you for watching. <laughs>